Hey there, Ramble Force. Chris Gamble here from the Digital Ramble with another episode. Joined as always by JJ Cannon in Houston. Hey, JJ. Hey, Gamble. How are you, my friend? We are doing wonderful over here, and I'm so excited to get back on and discuss today's episode with you. We're talking about solar energy renewables. Yeah, this is a green special edition of the Digital Ramble. We've got Sarah from Sonnen and we've got Sam from Oval Renewables and they're from different regions. You've got somebody in the US and somebody in the UK this week. Yeah, that's right, man. And uh, for those that have been tuned in to us, we actually had Sarah on back last September uh, and we actually were joined with her back at her booth. Yeah, that was a great episode. Sarah's going to bring a lot of energy to this energy special. Uh, so stay tuned for that. There's going to be a lot of conversation about battery storage, solar panels, and also electric vehicle chargers, which I know that Sam is a huge installer of. And Sam, I've seen over the years just explode on social media, and he's just such a, an advocate for a green lifestyle. It's, he's a great Instagram account to follow. Yeah, friends. So get your questions ready. Comment down below. Send us a DM. Ask away if you got some questions about renewables or solar power or battery backup for your residential home. Please put them down in the comments. Hey, for those that are new to the show, if you want to catch up on any of our previous content, check us out at digitalrambleshow.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And man, have our YouTube subscriptions and likes on Facebook been going through the roof. Yeah, and it's, it's all to do with these interviews, JJ. We've done back-to-back -back interviews now for several weeks, and the view count's just going up and up and up. So we really appreciate our new uh, subscribers on YouTube. If you are subscribed or you're new to the channel, please turn on notifications, hit that bell, and, and like the videos, and, and comment, join in. We're very active at replying to comments, and, and we welcome your, your contributions. Yeah, absolutely. And we also want to say thank you to all of our Patreons out there that contribute to our show on a monthly basis. And if you'd like to help contribute to the show, you can go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the digital ramble and contribute for as little as a dollar a month. It's very easy to do. That's right. Now, JJ, this is a big episode. So let's get into it. This is going to be the green special episode of the digital ramble with Sarah from Sonnen and Sam from Oval Renewables, episode 82. We have another UK-US split. Sarah, Sam, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have y'all on the Digital Ramble show. Thanks very much. Excited to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And for some of our longtime viewers, y'all might remember us visiting Sarah over at the Cedia booth last year, 2019. If you want to go back after the show, please do. It's there in our YouTube catalog of greatest hits. And so take a look at that. If you two would please uh, engage with our audience, let them know what capacity y'all feel because y'all aren't both from the same, same uh, company. That's right. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, JJ and Chris, for inviting me back. I'm surprised you did after my last one. Um, but I'm Sarah Drescher for the audience who doesn't know me. Um, I am the specification manager for energy automation at Sonin, uh, our U.S. division. Um, the fundamental mission of what I do is to educate specifiers like architects, builders, and developers on the energy automation with our Ecolinks product, really increasing the awareness of the renewable category as well, along with energy storage. So in this position, I work very closely with our certified contractors to facilitate project management and provide an overview of the system to meet homeowners' expectations. Today, what I focus on is the U.S. and Canada market. Yeah, so um, mine definitely isn't as fancy as all of that. <laughs> um, mine is um, uh, coming from an electrical background um, and went straight from school at 16 to do um, an apprenticeship and just found a, a love of, of renewables and so started to fit fit renewables and, and love fitting high quality systems really. Um, so based uh, based in York and cover all of the UK fitting, fitting anything renewable uh, basically. So um, yeah, that's that's me. And not just the UK, Sam, I've seen you overseas as well. You've, you've... You've gone all fancy. You've been over in France yeah. this year, haven't you? 
Yeah, we doubled in a um, doubled in a Sonnen in uh, in France for a for a customer. Um, so yeah, went over there and uh, sorted a sorted a Sonnen out for him um, to take advantage of all the soul that they have in the south of France. <laughs> a bit different to to here, but um, yeah, it was a, a great project and um, yeah, they were a great great family that I stayed with. So um, yeah, it was a, a good good job. Was that one? Cool. And uh, JJ and Sarah, Sam is really very, very active on social media with his Instagram account in particular. And he's really came to my attention as somebody that's communicating clearly the benefits and, and the need for an investment in renewables in your property. And he, you know, he'll, he'll probably play it down, but he's been definitely moved to the top of the tree in the renewables on, on social media. Sam, how long have you been doing renewables? I mean, because it's, it's been around for a little bit, but it really hasn't been, you know, in the home. I, I think with some of the, the advances that, that Sonin's really made, it's made it possible for you to, to really start to expand your business. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I mean, I've, I've been doing uh, electric since I was 16, um, 20, 25 now. Um, and so right from the start, I, like I mentioned before, went into an electrical apprenticeship at 16, started to do uh, standard electrical work, um, but then the company I was working for diversified into um, renewable technologies. Uh, basically, when the, the feeding tariffs um, in the UK were all, sort of released uh, and suddenly there was uh, this huge incentive for homeowners and businesses to get renewable technology um, so the company I was working for diversified and, and started to offer those services which involved me uh, as a as a 16 year old apprentice uh, helping fit these batteries and well mainly solar at that time to be honest and um, and yes yeah, so I started to do that and just sort of yeah just found that it was it was so interesting and it the technology moved so fast fast like you mentioned <laughs> With companies like Son and you know helping to really push things uh, and offering a, a really a really good system um, and yeah it, it just it just snowballs with EV charging and solar and batteries that you can suddenly have a home or a business that that's got some really cool equipment um, in there it's yeah it's a really exciting area of electrics to be in. To Sarah, tell us about Sonnen. It's this is a global brand with its origins, I think, in in Europe. You're obviously a representative of their U.S. company, but tell us about Sonnen, the size, the scale, locations, and, and and just fill in some of the blanks for people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Sonnen was founded in Whipple Street, if I'm going to say that <laughs> correctly, Germany um, in 2010. So on this past Earth Day, we actually just hit our 10-year anniversary, which is really incredible um, for this space, a huge milestone. Um, so our founders, Christoph Osterman and Torsten Steffenhofer, were really inspired to store sunlight energy in a battery and manage how renewable energy was used on the grid. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but did you know that Wuppelschried is the energy capital for Germany? We didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Is. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Um, yeah, so in, it's a really great location, obviously, for Sonnen to be headquartered in. Um, but in 2015, it actually generated nine megawatts of power as a, as a city, three times more than what it demands at its most peak with the 2,500 uh, inhabitants that it has. Um, so it's really become one of the areas known in the world as one of the most advanced renewable areas. Um, it's a really cool quote that I have here from, uh, from Siemens, uh, one of the project uh, managers over there, that they say that this is no longer an energy consuming region, it's actually a power plant. Um, so it's really cool how much energy that they're producing over there, but with all these great clean power generation capabilities and technology advancements that they have, the townspeople actually started to see higher electric bills, some of the highest in the country. And the reason for that is with the existing grid system, energy must be used at the time that it is produced. So solar panels produce most of their energy during the day hours when the sun's up. And there's little demand for it at home because most people outside of this COVID-19 era were not home during the day. Um, so solar panels, um, and as a result, right, Germany has to sell that electricity that's being overabundantly produced during that time to neighboring countries, or sometimes in the worst case, it was actually wasted. So with this battery invention um, from 
Kristoff and Torsten, now they're able to harness that energy from the sun during the day and use it to meet the needs of the home at night. Um, so it's pretty exciting. That's super exciting. Now, mm -hmm. Sam, like Gamble was talking about, is is that you're really well known for your Instagram post and taking a product like Sonin, coupling it with solar panels and providing useful energy in clients' homes. Can you give us a an experience that you have, like maybe a common problem that that this really shoehorns into? So in, in regards, batteries and solar work, work best when um, a home or a business has, has a really um, high energy usage. Um, and so if it, fitting solar is one way to get around the problem. Uh, but like Sarah said, it generates the power during the day. Uh, and so if, if you've got high energy usage and your energy usage is uh, mainly on an evening, then you need a battery system really to take advantage of that um, take advantage of, of that power that you're producing. So uh, the problem would be high end usage and the solution really would be um, some sort of micro generation like a solar or a wind turbine or something like that and then a battery system like the Solomon battery and it's it's really not as, as scary as some people think is that when they see a home battery they think oh my god it's it's thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds and um you know a scary and complicated system this stuff works automatically and it's smart um that's you know that's the nature of it so yeah it's it's a great great system um and it works really well sarah are, are people seeing this as a as an investment into their home's infrastructure is it something that's maybe seen more on new construction or is it something that people are able to implement in in any home along with a, a source like wind or solar plus the battery so is it exclusive to, to new construction it is not exclusive to new construction no um, technically these can be retrofit products um, I will say there are a little bit of a bigger hurdle to do it in a retrofit situation. We are talking about, you know, lithium iron phosphate is the chemistry within our batteries. They're quite robust and heavy. Um, so just the logistics of moving the battery throughout the house in a uh, retrofit is a little bit more challenging than new construction. Um, where I'm prominently seeing these, they're kind of replacing the need at this point for a generator in the home. Um, so I, I'll see a lot of the specifiers from my channel really starting to do away with whole home generators and backups and have an essential, the key things that they want to keep on and maintain their lifestyle during outages. Um, that stuff's being moved to the battery. And typically sometimes it can charge from a generator if renewables aren't an option. Um, so there is always an option to have the battery in the house. And, and Sarah, could you talk to us a little bit more in depth about the battery? I mean, I know batteries get super hot and sometimes people are a little anxious about them being, you know, dangerous. How does Sonan overcome some of those challenges that might be found in other uh, battery retention systems? Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that I love about Sonan is we're 100% focused on the residential market. We're not dealing it with commercial batteries, we're not dealing with, you know, electric vehicles or other applications for our batteries. We're specifically designed for residential energy storage. Um, so because of that consideration, we've chosen the best chemistry to do that. And the reason why it's the best chemistry, that lithium iron phosphate, is because of that safety aspect. We wouldn't want something going into a home that wasn't safe and tested for that. So um, there is a great video online. You're, I do encourage everybody to take a look at it, but it is a puncture test. And what that does is it simulates the short circuit. So what would happen, God forbid, if anything happened, a tree falls on the battery or something happens where the car crashes into it because it's in the garage, what, any catastrophic event that could cause a short circuit. Um, so what ends up happening there is a very minimal thermal runaway. It's a white bubbly discharge, no fire, no damage to the home or property or to the residents, of course. Um, the other thing that I think really sets Sonin apart is just the longevity of that battery chemistry. It's designed to cycle. And when you're tying it into renewables, that cycling factor is super important. So what I mean by a cycle is when it goes from 0% charge all the way up to 100% charge and back down to zero. For at Sonin, we count that as one cycle. We have the longest warranty in the industry surpassed by 
far of uh, all the other competitors, um, 15 years this battery will last or 15,000 cycles. Um, so if you do the math based on the days of the year, you know, you're looking at well over 40 years on this product if you cycle it once a day. Wow. wow. Sam, you'll be retired by the end of some of these installations. <laughs> 40 years, you'll be drawing your pension, mate. Yeah. Uh, me too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on, that, on the puncture test um, that Sarah was, was, say, was talking about, uh, when I was um, doing my electric apprenticeship and with the, the company that diversified into renewables, we actually uh, got invited to Germany to, to that factory um, and had a, a tour with a couple of other companies um, and all expenses paid trip for a week. Um, for a young apprentice, that is that mm -hmm. is a, a golden ticket, is that so? But we learned a lot, and uh, we went around the factory, saw how they were they were made, the process, and then it, it felt like we went into um, the, like a bunker, went down, went right as deep as you could in the factory, and they had the the, the cabinet there, and they did the puncture test with a nail uh, on one of the cells that they use, and uh, first they they showed us the the sonnen. Um, cell uh, and like Sarah said the snail what nail goes through and it just uh, a bit of white sort of white throth came out and that was about it there's nothing scary and then they did um, another cell that was being heavily used at the time but in battery storage and um, it, it exploded uh, <laughs> within the fume cabinet and it, it caught us all by surprise just because we thought it would be a different reaction to the sonnen uh, cell but we didn't realize it'd be that different um so yeah it was uh, it was it was quite it was a good trip but yeah it's uh, i always remember that that um that experiment it was yeah it, it left it quite an impression and that, I, I would just like to add uh one other one other big thing about the battery chemistry is the eco forwardness of the entire solution so one of the things that I love to say, and I'm so glad I get to say it, is that Sonin is 100% recyclable. Um, so with that eco-forward mindset of being in renewables and with an energy storage system now knowing that even after the life of this product, you know, 15 years or 40 years down the line, you could still recycle it at the end of the day. That's awesome. It seems a very, um, you know, thoughtful company that's, that's thinking about the, the long term uh, and it's obviously the safety of its customers as well. Now, Sam, talk us through maybe very quickly, but the process of, you know, selling the benefits of this to a homeowner, that leading into an installation and, and, and handover to the customer. Firstly, what are the benefits you're selling? And then what's a typical cost of this to a homeowner for, for your average type of installation? The, the the cost uh, the, the cost side of things is um, is one of those questions we get asked a lot and the way that we do it is we don't like to just box move product so even though we we love selling um, sonnens and we, we want to sell as many as we can um, we don't like having a, a very fixed cost because it means that it can be very unaffordable for some people if, if you're if you're always basing it on the uh, on the worst case scenario mm. um, so we do an in-depth um, questionnaire or site survey to really get uh, a price uh, nailed down for for a customer um, with selling the actual uh, benefits and what are the benefits of uh, installing one of these batteries is that usually the person that's inquiring or has done the research um, on battery storage has already got some sort of micro generation like solar or wind or even hydro and they're now wanting the, they've seen maybe the benefit of the feeding tariff if they have solar so they've been making um, some decent money from the feeding tariff and they may have even so, uh, paid off their solar PV system um, at this point and still be have another 15 years of, of getting money from their original feeding tariff so now they're ready to invest in what the next big thing is um, and so even though solar has produced this income for the for the homeowner um, they now want to be able to actually use that power um, because they might be at work from nine till five and all the way through the day it's been generating really well as the solar and but it's just being sent back to the grid and so now they're wanting to use that power when they get home on a night and that's where this battery storage comes in and and allows them to to use this free power that they've been generating all day whilst they've been at work 
Um, so, so yeah, it's it's really not it's really not as, as scary like I said before as some people see it. It's just it charges up and discharges and and saves you money in the process. Honestly, it sounds it sounds very robust and and very entailing. How hard is it to manage? I mean, for somebody that is completely new to renewables, I mean, is there an app or is there a pad on the wall? I mean, how is it that somebody can generally can easily understand how much energy they have, how much they need to put back into the batteries? How does that function? So in, in the UK, um, we there's there's sort of two options that you, you can have. You can have a screen on the battery. Uh, however, to be honest, we tend to fit them without the screen. Um, they always have an internet connection as part of the warranty, um, as part of the warranty for the battery. And so there's an online uh, dashboard or portal. Um, one that they can log in, that the homeowner can log into um, when they're at home. So it's a, a live, it's almost like a live screen on your computer or wherever you're logging into it from at home uh, that shows you how much your solar is producing how much your home is consuming and then what the battery is, is doing so if your solar is producing more power than your home is using then it'll charge up if your home is using using more power than your solar is producing it'll discharge um, so it, it's all automatic um, the only part that requires a, a manual uh, basically a manual input is if you want to charge that battery from the grid on a cheap electricity tariff and this works very similar to um, in the UK we have the the storage heaters where uh, overnight heaters would uh, would would heat up on cheap electricity and then that heat would be discharged throughout the day and it's very similar with with the batteries um, the battery can charge up overnight on four or five pence electricity and then during the during the day it can discharge that power when there's a demand um, and, and that's really useful for the winter time and and low um, sort of low generation periods where you still want to use the battery uh, but your solar we haven't quite got the weather to, to charge the battery up uh, from the solar so you can still take advantage of of energy saving even when um, even when solar generation is low so it's it's all automatic apart from if you want to input those times into the battery for when it needs to charge up uh, and then just leave the battery and it'll, it'll do its thing. Sarah, are there, are there differences between the UK products or European products and, and the US products? Is, is there a difference at all? We do have a, a, a sales office and a team in the UK that would service that region. So if there's anyone that needs to reach out for the UK side and, and they want are interested in products, obviously Sam's definitely a great expert to go to. Um, but there's also, you know, we have our, our Sony website and I can share that with you afterwards for the UK and direct customers there. Um, as far as the U.S. goes, um, the EcoLink product that I mentioned, this is the most intelligent system because it can integrate and form this energy automation um, that I was talking about. For instance, preparing your home for a storm and intelligently linking to home automation platforms that exist in the home. Um, that is only available today in the United States and Canada, but um, I'm happy to say that they are definitely working on a solution for, uh, for your neck of the woods there, Chris. And <laughs> you know, with with a system like this, it, I'm almost hearing like two stories of the UK having this, you know, power backup storage, uh, you know, this transfer of energy to the grid from the grid and, and that kind of scenarios. But then I hear this tale of power cuts, storms, different scenarios. It just seems like it's two different markets and, and Sam in the UK we're, we never really have that fear of power cuts and tropical storms and crazy adverse weather but in the US it, it seems a lot more needed for extreme circumstances could you go off grid with a solar array plus or a wind source plus your battery setup could you go off grid Sarah you, you can. You have to properly size the system, though, and it really, that's what it comes down to, is making sure the homeowner understands that every time you turn a load on, that has an impact on the battery life. 
So if you're completely off grid and you have no other source of generation besides what you're producing from the sun, you just have to be mindful of how you're using the energy in your home. And with Stonin, it's a great tool to enable you to do that. We really put homeowners in the driver's seat to manage their energy when and how they need it. Once somebody does have this system deployed in their home, what kind of maintenance is there associated with this? Is there, do you have to have a, a technician on a, on a yearly come by and maintain this system for you? Kind of like a vehicle needs an oil change. Uh, is this something that the homeowner might have to maintain on their own or is this just a set it and forget it type of solution? So um, with, with that, there are many, many systems that um, you'll install and the, that's it. They, they don't want anyone to come back. They, they want to just get the benefits uh, of, the, of the battery system. And Sonnen, the Sonnen system is, is very, very bulletproof. Um, however, it's like your car. that you, It does need checking in now and again. Um, again, there'll be cars on the road that, have never, that have only have their MOT and, and never get serviced or anything and and they're probably the ones that will be in the garage the most ironically uh, when things start to go wrong with the battery systems it it, it can be similar um, there are less moving parts you maybe have a fan um, or you do have a fan and things like that but the the main part of it is is chemistry so it's important to to monitor that chemistry make sure the the voltages are okay um, make sure the fan vents are clear are clear um because heat is its biggest enemy really um so if you need to uh, if you need to clear the vent uh, and what have you then it's always good to have a have a service and it, it does depend on the location of the system if it's if it's in an office somewhere like that where it's not too dusty then you can probably go a longer period than than if it's in a, a garage where they do a bit of woodwork and something like that and there's quite a lot of dust being spat up into the into the air so yes definitely does need servicing and it's um it's certainly a sealed a fairly sealed unit so it would take a, a technician to come back but i don't see that as a negative i see that as a positive because it'll basically prolong the life of the system um, and when you've invested in something like this you want it to last as long as it can no 100 percent agree with that uh, sarah when we first met and you knew JJ before but we met last year at the CDA Expo trade convention in, in Denver and this week and it's a pre-recorded show audience but we heard that show is going to be cancelled which is a shame and I don't know if you were going to go there again but that show is a home automation smart home extravaganza and in all of the exhibitors you guys stood out like a sore thumb because there was this energy company renewable tech but when you dived into the stand you started to see that there was integration with the well-known smart home platforms home automation platforms tell us about how your system can work in conjunction with a home automation control system in your home yeah i'm so glad you asked this this is definitely the side of the business that excites me the most um you know, with my history coming from Lutron, just smart home in general is definitely, it's so exciting. And to be back on that CDF floor will be great next year. Um, it's definitely unfortunate that it got canceled this year. But um, yeah, with Sonin, we have a product, Ecolinx. And with that Ecolinx product, it links to the home automation. And that's kind of why we're at that show, where we can show homeowners and integrators how Control 4, Savant, Adapt Energy, Crestron, these leading home automation platforms can all communicate with links and what that can do for them. So, for instance, when you look at a Control 4 home screen, you have different like apps within it. You can have that stone and dashboard that Sam was describing live within that. Um, you could have that live within the Savant app as well. But it's really putting homeowners in that driver's seat, seeing it straight up front, being able to control um, how and when they use their energy. It also takes it to another level when you start integrating because you get um, circuit level control as well when you start tying into these other solutions. So for instance, if it is a power outage in wherever we are in the United States and um, you know it's only going to be two hours, well, I can say, hmm, I, you know, I'd really like to take a shower, but 
I set this energy profile during my backup mode that I only have the lights and the refrigerator on because I really wanted to extend that out. So now as a homeowner, I have the flexibility of going to that hot water heater circuit, flipping that breaker on and taking that 30 minute shower and flipping it off and really being able to conserve the battery as needed. You know, there's been so many cases. I live in New Jersey now. We went through Hurricane Sandy. Um, we had power, we didn't have power for 10 days. Uh, Florida gets hit with hurricanes a lot. I mean, even just the blip in the brownouts that we have with the quality of power out there, um, this is really useful to keep your life on track and your lifestyle. We call it energy insurance. Very eco-friendly. Uh, life safety is in mind. Uh, uh, excellent warranty. If somebody wants to become an installation professional, does Sonin have a training academy to get them certified to, uh, to integrate this with maybe some of the platforms that they're doing now? Absolutely. Um, right now, we have fully online course available, about three to four hours. They'll take the course online. They have to pass the test. Um, about 70 questions. It's a pretty robust test. Um, but once they pass it, then they are Sonin certified. And then their first couple of jobs, Sonin is partnered with them, helping them through design, helping them through um, installation and commissioning, just to make sure everything goes smoothly for that homeowner. And so, Sam, on, just going back to the smart home part, I know you, you, you're not like a traditional smart home installer. I know you, I've seen you do a lot of Nest and things like that, but I've seen you working with other people in the industry who've, who, just to pick one of the names, Control 4, I've seen you working with others that install that. Are you having conversations with them that they should be integrating, or if it is available, integrating Sonnen into their smart home installations with your support and your, your help? Yeah, I mean, to my knowledge, we can't, we can't do the, uh, get the integration as yet, but as soon as we can, it's, it's just going to be great because that dashboard is, it's not only about the battery, it's about the, the home, what the mm. home is using. Um, and these people that have, have paid this money for, for a smart home, they want to be able to view the battery uh, via the same way they view, um, you know, what the TV and, and, and things like that. So to get, to get that into uh, the control for side of things, um, there are discussions going on uh, of, of when that happens that would it would just be brilliant um but as yet i don't think we can uh but as soon as we can i know that it'll it'll be very popular um and it also brings the battery technology um uh, almost as a, a into the normal normal day-to-day -day living it's not some sort of weird extra thing that people get and don't really know how it works it, it brings it in and it you know the icon can be sat there next to the nest icon or the TV icon and, and mm. people can go and view it um, that have these smart homes just by clicking on their on their uh, tablet or or whatever they've got. Um, so it, uh, integration to smart homes is very exciting and it's it's uh, much needed. Yeah, that that scenario you talked about there, Sarah, where you have a profile. So when you're on your backup power, telling your home automation system, you know, lighting loads heating demands hot water demands to you know turn off or turn on or prioritize that is we've brought it all the way back jj back to smart home i knew we would get it all the way back now we're talking about home tech and smart home and now my cogs are turning i'm thinking well i need to i really need to up my game for my business on on renewables jj you're in texas you're in the, one of the sunniest places on the planet you need to be getting some of this set up for your clients that's right jj <laughs> Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, uh, thank goodness we haven't had a hurricane as of recently in the past couple of years. But I mean, this is ideal for, you know, whenever we do have our brownouts or our blackouts, you know, for, for any time. And, and then also, if you're just, if you're green conscious and you want to, you know, get off the grid, I think this is a fantastic solution for that. One of the questions we ask all our, our people on our show, um, is if there is one device, one home tech device that you can't live without, share it with our audience, please. You're going to hate me, but I'm very boring um, <laughs> at the minute. We're, we're currently doing a we're currently doing a house up, and it's uh, all pre-wired 
uh, or is in the process of, be, of pre-wired for a smart home. So getting some um, rain, rainbow spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You've got it. Um, so <laughs> the the thing that we use at the minute uh, more than anything is is uh, like the Amazon Fire TV stick and the Nest Nest thermostat. Um, but yeah, if you ask this question, if you ask me this question in a year's time, I'll probably have a much more interesting answer for you uh, when we get when we get the house all up and running. But uh, yeah, for the for the time being, Nest and um, Nest and uh, Amazon Fire TV stick. Yeah, uh, I was leaning on Apple TV. <laughs> Couldn't live without it. <laughs> it certainly makes it easy. Um, but if I really had to pick one of our smart home, it's going to have to be Caseda. It's the easiest lighting control out there. Super simple to install, and I just love my Pico next to the bed at night. Perfect. Yeah, it's awesome. So some lighting and some entertainment and, and also a little bit of energy saving there with a smart thermostat. Where can people find out, Sam, where can people find out about Oval Renewables? I've talked about social media, but websites, I guess you're all set up for that as well. So website is, we've had so much going on uh, that the website is currently being, is being made. Um, so there's just a bit of a holding page there at the minute, but we've just launched our uh, YouTube channel. So um, call it uh, good timing, but on Friday, there's a video coming out Friday at 7 p.m. Um, coming out about the sun and battery, uh, one of our uh, projects in York. So with that, I'll give a brief overview of, of uh, how the system works uh, and you can have a look at uh, it sat next to a solar, solar system and what have you. So yeah, YouTube, uh, we've just set up. Uh, but Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, yeah, we're, we're all over all of those. Um, so yeah, I, I love getting questions and scenarios because it, that's the only way that we, uh, we learn um, how to integrate this stuff even better. So if anyone does have any questions, just, just send us a message and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll definitely put that link to your video in our description because this, this will go out after that video's dropped, so we'll, we'll put that in our description. And Sarah, where can people find out more about Sonnen globally and maybe in the US as well? With Sonnen in the US, the website is sonnenusa.com. Um, if you wanna get more specific on the energy automation stuff and that you found that very interesting, um, I would go to the Sonnen Ecolinks webpage, which I'll, I'll share with you guys so you can post that out. It's a little bit of a long URL. Um, but as far as outside of, the U.S. Um, it's stoneandbattery.com, and battery is spelled with an I-E. Um, you could always email info at stoneandbattery.co.uk for more information over in uh, England. So, yeah. And of course, I'm available as well. You can just look me up on social media and stuff. That's fine. Cool. It's all over LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn preferred. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah with Sonin and Sam with Oval Renewables. It's been absolutely fantastic learning from you two today. Thank you for joining us here on the Digital Ramble. And uh, we, we hope the best for both of y'all's uh, endeavors uh, with whatever y'all uh, set forth. And uh, thanks again for joining us today on the Digital Ramble. Thanks very much. Thanks yeah. for having us. And good luck, Sam, with the refurbishment of that home. I've, I've seen <laughs> yeah, some books. Got a big job in front of you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, guys. Cheers. As always, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, turn on notifications, share it with people. Facebook as well, share it. Hit those. What we want is to see lots of those little emojis jumping up the side of the screen. So if you're watching on Facebook, please smash all those, those little faces on the bottom of the post. But as JJ point a now famous phrase in this industry, if you don't know, ask the home tech pro. Okay, recording. Five, four. Gamble and digital ramblers. Digital Ramblers, thank you. Oh, let's see here. The recording's on. Five, four. One sec, one sec. Are you okay, sir? Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. That's, yeah. your good, that's your good side right there, man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Five, four. But, you know, how does Sonin play into that or, you know, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? You know, that, I compete. I'm going to edit all this out, so. Um, how to how does um, so yeah, as simple as that. Right. 